27 World Series titles, 39 AL pennants, 24 Hall of Famers. As one of the most iconic franchises in MLB history, yearly expectations begin and end for the Yankees with adding a 28th title to their mantle. In 2018, the Bronx Bombers' pursuit of an AL East title was derailed when the rival Red Sox swept a four-game series in early August. An ALDS loss to the Red Sox only added salt to the wounds. To be sure, this is a team that won 100 games last year, and the Yankees are loaded with superstars up and down the roster. Is 2019 the year the Yankees reestablished themselves as the AL Alpha Dog? The chase begins now. Yankee Stadium in the Bronx as the New York Yankees get their 2019 season underway against the Baltimore Orioles. And with more on the Yanks' outlook for 2019, we send it down to our sideline reporter, Heidi Watney. Matt, I asked a few of the players how it feels to enter the season carrying the weight of high expectations placed on them as consensus frontrunners. They say they enter with high expectations, too, but their plan is to take it one game at a time. For today, that would mean replicating last year's opening day victory, which helped them get off to a strong 18-10 and 10 start in their first month. Another strong start would be a good first step towards overcoming the world champion Red Sox in the AL East and making a 28th World Series title a reality for this franchise. Thank you, Heidi. And now for the moment these Yankee fans have been waiting for all winter. Opening day. Oh, welcome to those of you just joining us. We're in the sixth inning. Nobody out. Digging in for his second at bat, number one. This game is rolling right along as we move into the middle innings with no score. You'd think by now one of these two teams would be able to get some base runners on and get him in, but that hasn't been the case. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. And he gets him to swing through that one. He's in control 0-2. You know, when a guy starts to get tired, you often see their breaking stuff start to flatten out, but that's not the case here. Still has really nice finish on that slider, as we just saw. Got him swinging on the fastball there. Number one goes down to become the first out in the sixth inning. This is what a power pitcher will do to you if he executes his pitches. That was a three-pitch strikeout, and with the kind of stuff that he has, it's not uncommon for him to absolutely dominate certain guys. Into the box, Cedric Mullins. 0-1 oh, the count. Aye. In there, and he's ahead 0-2 oh, now. now. Oh, into. oh, that's for sure going to be a pitch he wants back. You're not going to get many balls right in the wheelhouse from a top-level arm like this. Skied into straightaway right. Judge is under it. And that's the second out of the inning. The batter number two, second baseman, Jonathan Villar. Into the box now, Jonathan Villar. It's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point. Hey. Now a strike called in the upper part of the zone. Yeah, I'm shocked he let that first pitch go right there. High fastball, but usually those ones travel the furthest. Tries to drop one down here, but he misses. Strike two. Both teams with just two hits apiece thus far. Lifted down the line in left. Gardner is after it. And he makes a nice catch on the track as that ends the inning. Three up, three down for the Orioles. We are still scoreless. Digging in to try it again. Brett Gardner. He singled his last time up. The left First pitch of the at bat Red. on its way. Gunner. Lifted the other way out to left center. Mullins giving chase, but he won't get to it, and this should put a man in scoring position to start the inning. 
And a great start to the inning for the Bombers. It's a leadoff triple. Yeah, and after that one, it looks like the first run of the game could be coming pretty soon. He got a pitch that he liked, and he roped it to the outfield. Then he showed the speed necessary to make it all the way around to third. Stepping in now, Aaron Hicks, as he lays off a fastball too low for ball one. His lifetime line against Andrew Kashner, decent numbers. He's six for 15. The 1 0 home. And he grooves the fastball there. This is hit high and deep out to straightaway center field. The runner from third crosses the plate, and they've taken a 1 0 lead. And he is into second base with an RBI double. The right fielder. When this thing left his bat, I started thinking it might have enough to get out of here. Didn't quite carry enough, but it does one hop the wall off the track, and he cruises into second with an RBI two bagger. You'll take that every day of the week. Here's big Aaron Judge. Now a ball lined toward the alley in left center. And that finds the outfield grass for a base hit. He'll get it into second. But he'll get in there with an RBI double. Hey, Dero, there's a prime example of a little ambush piece, right? Come up there looking to hit right off the get-go. First pitch comes in, whack, base hit. Yeah, you want to know if this guy was ready to go? He had a game plan. Hashtag ambush. Here we go now. Giancarlo Stanton now as he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game so far. Into right field that's a base hit. And they'll put the brakes on at third. Runners at the corners with nobody out. Yeah, and I think he might have lulled himself into a false sense of security out there. Prior to this inning, he was pitching a shutout. But now he's starting to look a little off. Into the box now, Luke Voigt. 0 for 2 for him to this point. First pitch of the at-bat. Swing and a miss that time. It's 0 and 1. From a hitter's perspective, you knocked a donut off your bat knowing two things. This pitcher is out on the mound looking for a strikeout or a double play, so you better set your sights at least belt high. Nope. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. I like that they went away with that pitch right there. They really tried to tie him up on that previous pitch, so he was probably what we call inside conscious. He didn't get a strike there, but I'm guessing he was looking for another ball in. Starts to go around, but the home plate umpire says he held up ball two. Boy, he better get it back together here quick because he's got two guys on already. He's starting to lose location of that strike zone. He's got to throw a strike right here. Two runs, six hits, and no errors for the Yankees so far. Pitch is popped up. Davis in foul ground, one away. Now batting, the shortstop, D.D. Gregorio. So we've got runners at the corners here, one away, and here's the left-handed hitting shortstop, Didi Gregorius now. He's set, and the pitch. Ball. Way That's inside bad. with that one, a pretty easy take there. First and third, you know he's going to do everything he can on the mound to roll up a double play ball. On the other side, he's got to be looking for a mistake up in the zone that he can drive in the air and pick up a sack fly at the very least. Line drive to center field. Mullins is there, and that should be deep enough to score the run. The relay throw on to first, and they get the double play. 
And here's the big right-handed power threat, Trey Mancini. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. And he'll start the inning with a pitch that misses off the plate. It's ball one. These guys have got to be frustrated as an offensive unit so far in this one. They haven't been able to crack the code on their opponent, but it's not like they're getting great pitch to hit either. This starter has kept the ball on the corners of the zone all game long. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Fouled off. Still one and two. That wasn't a terrible pitch right there, but if he's going to execute and get this swing and a miss, he's going to have to get that ball a little bit further down, maybe even potentially bounce the next one. Another one-two delivery. Count still at one and two. Oh, and he can only battle for so long as he's finally set down here after an eight-pitch at-bat. Well, you can tell by their approach that they're going to go up there and try to be aggressive off this guy, but he's taking full advantage of that. He's pounding the zone with strikes, and right now we're seeing a lot of swings and misses and a lot of strikeouts and no walks either. Here's Mark Trumbo now. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. A hit and two tries for him so far. Now it's 2-0. and oh. Previous history with Luis Severino. He's got five base hits in 17 at-bats. He's also hit a couple of home runs against him. And it's two balls and a strike to Trumbo. No runs, two hits, and no errors for the Orioles so far. And he struck him out. And there's strikeout number 11 in the ballgame. Certainly not showing any signs of intimidation with these middle-of-the-order guys. That's back-to-back -back Ks, and the three and four guys are harmlessly back in the dugout. Here's Chris Davis now. He hits with two away as they continue to trail in this close game. Well, Matt, this has been a big inning on the mound. He's had to face the middle of the order, and so far he's held them at bay. Yeah, this feels like the kind of inning we'll look back on at the end of the game, even if the result of it changes dramatically here. Behind 0-2 now. The windup and the 0-2 pitch. Lifted the other way out to left center. Gardner on the move. He's there to make the play, and that'll retire the side. Now at the plate, Gary Sanchez. A hit in two at-bats for him at this point in the ballgame. The catcher, Gary Sanchez. On its way is pitch number 75. And that ball misses one, for no ball strike. one. Back up the middle and in for a base hit. With that, the Yankees have put their leadoff hitter aboard to start out the inning. Up next for the Yankees, the third baseman. Here's Miguel Andujar now. His lifetime Andujar. line against Andrew Kashner. He's just two for nine. Here comes the first pitch. Hard liner to center field. And that'll get down out there near the wall. Sanchez rounds third and is digging for the plate. And he's safe at the plate as they push their lead to three now. Hey, Dero, that's a big RBI right there to stretch this lead to three. Takes a lot of pressure off your pitcher going into the bottom part of the inning. Yeah, Dan, no doubt. As an offense, all you're trying to do is put your pitchers in positions to be successful. Giving them that three-run cushion has to make you feel good. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the Baltimore skipper out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And a change is in the offing as that'll be all for his starter this afternoon. He'll leave after six and at the very least kept his club in it to this point. And that'll bring up Glaber Torres. He swings and grounds it to short. Scooped up. And an off-balance throw is in time as he takes one away. Wow. 
the left fielder, number 11. Now at the plate, Brett Gardner. He made it to third on a triple in his previous appearance. First pitch of the at bat. Just able to get a piece of that for strike one. And Duhar stands at third with one gun in the inning. Smoke toward the hole. He lays out, but he can't make the play, and it's through into right. And that'll bring home another as they open it up to a 4 nothing advantage now. Hey, that's what you try and do as an offense. You get a four-run lead. They're a grand slam ahead, Dan, but you're a former closer warming up. When you see a three-run lead and then your offense gets it to four and you know that save situation's gone out the window, don't tell me that didn't irk you a little. Oh, it does irk oh. you. Oh, it does because, Dero, <laughs> the only way you're going to get into this game is it has to be a save situation. You sit and watch eight innings of baseball. You get up to warm up in the ninth, and you're all ready to go thinking, hey, I'm going to come in and get me a three out save and all of a sudden you're out of the game because it's a four run lead of course you think about it as a reliever hey there's a case of a jam sandwich right there not that bad of a pitch but he's able to just be strong enough to loop that one into left field Dan sometimes a jam sandwich tastes much better than a rocket right at somebody here comes the first pitch oh he gets around on the fastball here and drives it out to deep left center field and this will get over the wall it's gone, a home run. So a three-run shot to left center. First home run of the campaign for him as this lead swells to seven to nothing. I'm sure you know it's coming after that bomb. That's right. Let's check it out on show track. And as the numbers come in, we see it was projected at over 450 feet. An incredible home run to watch. Nate Carnes enters now in a mop-up role as he'll try to keep the deficit right where it is. Nate Carnes. Into the box now, Giancarlo Stanton. Up next for the Yankees. The Line to hitter. second where it's caught Stanton. there for out number two. Stanton. Striding in once again, Luke Voigt. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. Way behind that pitch, it's 0-1. Toward the gap in right center. This is going to be a base hit, and he may take that big turn at first. The throw into second. And the gamble will work out. He's in at second base with a two-out double. The batter. Man, I don't think he could have bisected those fielders any better if he tried. Drove that one into the alley for a gapper that'll bring him easily into second base. Here's Didi Gregorius. Line drive to center field. And he will get there to make the running play, and that will end the inning. Nine men come to the plate, however. Five of them score. Eighth inning coming up. Rio Ruiz to the plate now. Starting to run out of time. They haven't been able to score any runs as we're moving late into this one. A perfect time for this leadoff guy to try to get on base and ignite a rally. Eighth inning from Yankee Stadium. Yankees on top in this one at home as you get a look at the line score. Stepping into the box, Dwight Smith Jr. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Late swing there at the breaking ball. Must have been looking for something else. You see there, the pitch count is up to 88. And at this point in the game, that's a good place to be. So I think we'll see him stay out there for at least a little while longer. Oof, and it's no safe ball, to say he doesn't strikes. look all that comfortable up there. 0-2 now. I know we want to focus on the offense and how bad they've been so far, but can we give some love to the pitcher? He has had these guys in the rocking chair all day. 
Uh, and he's just rolling right now and even dozen strikeouts for him in the ball game. Boy, he's just been setting him up and knocking him down all afternoon. We've seen a lot of punch outs from him where he didn't get much resistance. Three pitches right there and see you later. In now for the O's, Jesus Sucre. And Dan, it seems like this starter is just dominating the game right now. Feels like we're seeing a lot of three up, three down innings. No doubt about that, Matt. Hey, I've enjoyed watching him go about his business, but I'm also interested to see if this offense can figure out a way to get a couple of cracks in his armor before it gets too late. Yeah, that remains to be seen. Grounded weakly toward third. Andujar's got it. Oh, and he overshoots his first baseman as it's over his head. And he's going to make it up to second base safely as he's in there. My word. This could have been much worse for the first baseman here. He goes up for the throw, leaving his feet, and exposes himself to a potentially devastating collision because the throw was down the first baseline. He's lucky he didn't get taken out right here. Standing in now, number one. Sends that one out of play for strike one. No hits to this point. Good hard slider there, but it runs away. It's a ball and a strike. A ball and two strikes to the Orioles shortstop. Sucre at second with two down. And he's got another one. 13 strikeouts now, and the inning is over. One left for the Orioles. They're down by a touchdown, 7-0. Digging in, Gary Sanchez. He's two for three thus far. Here's the first pitch to him. And this is taken outside for ball one. Line to the right side. And a base hit, so the leadoff man is aboard. Hey, Dero, not a bad night. Three singles, but hey, you'll take three for four every day of the week. Yeah, in today's day and age, Dan, where everything's a homer, a walk, or a strikeout, it's refreshing to see this guy throw out three base hits. In now, Miguel Andujar as it's grounded sharply to first. To second for one, oh. relay to Davis, oh. and indeed it's a double play. That's no, one no. of the hardest double plays to turn reason. right there because of Labor. the difficult throw the first baseman has to make. No problem this time, though, and they get the two outs they were looking for. Stepping in now, Torres. Line towards center field. Mullins is there, and they breeze through this half inning as the side is retired. Ready for another shot now, Cedric Mullins. Starting things for his side in the ninth as they face the improbable odds of trying to come back in this one. Yeah, not a lot of hope for them at this point, but these guys know these bats still count, at least for their own stats. You can't mill in your chances as a professional. On the ground a second for Torres. He's got it. Throw on to first for the out, and that is how the ninth inning gets underway. Now batting, second baseman. Jonathan. Now in the box, Jonathan Villar. It was a flyout for him in his last hey. trip. In there, 0 and 1. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. Ball. Hung the slider there, but laid off for ball one. Talk about frustrating as a pitcher. You make a great pitch like that, and the guy just lays off of it. That barely missed the zone. One out, nobody on. And another foul ball.
high in the air and drifting out to shallow center. Hicks is there. Two gone. Now batting the left fielder. Stepping up to the plate, Trey Mancini. He's their last shot here with two away in the ninth as they look to avoid the shutout. Yeah, Matt, and they just haven't had any answer for the great pitching so far in this one. Legs churning. He's headed for second. And the throw in gets away from him. And now he'll get into scoring position with two away. When you're struggling as a team to put the ball in play, every base hit is welcome, but a double will really help wake everyone up. That's just their third hit of the game, but it's a good one. Into the box, Mark Trumbo. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. Oh, that's out. Lays off the slider, and it's one and one. A hey, great take on that slider away right there. But I'm thinking in that situation, that pitcher's got to execute a little bit better. That was almost a non-competitive pitch. Being outside, you could almost have let that one go right out of his hand. Now what's left of this crowd this afternoon gets to their feet. Fouled away. Baltimore down to their final strike. And this is in the air to right, and this should do it. He brings it in, and the Yankees move to 1-0 on the young season as this ball game is over. Well, we emphasized earlier in the telecast what a lift it can be to win on opening day, but what do you really think this means, d -Row? Well, for the winner, it's a huge confidence boost, Dan, no doubt. But for the loser, hey, it's just one game. You shake it off, remind yourself you're at the beginning of a long season, and you come out ready to play next time. Thank you.